Hey, I'm Justin, and this is The Art of Repair. Today, I'm going to show you a technique that every micro solder must know, all right? One day, you're going to get caught without solder paste, and you're going to need to reball something. And it's going to be pretty tough if you ain't never done it before by hand. So today, I'm going to show you how to do perfect hand reballing with perfectly sized little leaded balls on there. No problem. It's going to be easy, guys. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and say right out the gate here, um, credit is due where credit is due. Uh, I got a buddy named Zai Ni. Um, he's out of Malaysia. He is the one who originally kind of gave me the theory behind this and you know how he does it and everything. And you know I just kind of modified it a little bit to, to fit me a little bit better. But I'm going to go ahead and show you mine, and I'm going to go ahead and show you the way that he does it. Um, he's got all kinds of really cool stuff that I'm going to show you guys, man. He is, he is a cool cat. He knows his stuff. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started here. Um, I'm going to use a NAND chip since i got a bunch of these sitting around from one of the last projects that I was doing. Um, and like I said, you can you can do this on anything. It doesn't matter. It's just going to be easy and fun. And you're going to be like, why didn't I do that before? So, I mean, that's definitely what I was saying. Like when I saw this, I was like, well, maybe I feel a little stupid. But not anymore because I know how to do it. So let's go ahead and rock. All right, so let's go ahead and get our chip under here. And all we're really going to do right now is that we're going to add some solder to the uh, to the pads themselves. I always kind of do it in order so that whenever I'm doing it, I'm not running back across another one and taking solder off another pad. Uh, but, you know, like always, you do you. And, you know, whatever makes you happy, rock on. So let's grab some solder here, get some flux going on. And let's go ahead and get these pads full of solder. I don't even think I really need the microscope for this, but whatever. Bloop, bloop, bloop. If you pull away a little quicker, you're gonna, it's gonna be a little easier to get more solder on it. You know, you don't need the world here, but you know, a good amount's definitely gonna help this process, and you'll see why here momentarily. Make sure we keep flexing. All right. Ooh, just a big one. You don't want the blob to get too big or it'll start grabbing stuff off the adjacent pads and you'll be just fighting back and forth with it. So do yourself a favor and don't fight it because you're going to lose. Also, this is a total public service announcement. Um, it is absolutely terrible to solder without exhaust. And right as I started the video, I realized that mine was still on my desk at work. So I'm gonna do this anyway, but just know that it is absolutely terrible and I forgot how nasty this stuff was because it's been a long time since I really smelled it like this and just don't get yourself an exhaust. They're not they're not expensive. Even if it's a basic one, you need to get one. Cause I'm gonna be real. If I if I had to solder like this every day, I'd be quitting. Like I mean that that's actually to be honest. If you if you look at the statistics on solderers themselves, you know one of the main reasons that they quit is because of the fumes. So you know take that as you will. And again, once as always, you do you. But I wouldn't do it. Not on purpose. So let's go ahead and get this finished here. Sorry about that. I had to do a little PSA because all I was thinking about while I was doing this was how disgusting that leaded, nasty smell is. It's disgusting. Ugh. All right. Let's do this. Just holding my breath. So I don't die from this nasty 
Disgusting. Solder fume. Which is terrible for you, by the way. It'll kill you. It's lead. Nasty, disgusting lead. Ugh. I promise you, I will never forget that bad boy again. I'll tell you that. Maybe I just need two. Alright, we are down to the last bit here. No problem, we are almost there. Now obviously if you were doing this in your shop or at home, you'd probably be done way before me. Just because you're just doing you, you know? But let's get this thing cleaned off. There's nothing too big on here. And you'll definitely be able to feel the, the solder balls on here once you've actually done this. They shouldn't be that small that you don't. Alright. Alright, so. I'm going to show you my buddy Zainese's way to do this first. Just because this is like... This is what I saw. When I saw this, I was like, what? All right, then, uh, sign me up. So we have leaded solder. It's leaded solder, all right? Leaded solder. It's going to write like a pencil here. Let me grab a, oh, let me grab something real fast. All right, so with that being said, I've got myself a piece of paper here. Now, as we all know here, if you look at the side of this, these are not the same size. This is not going to work out. In fact, there's some here that probably need some more on it that I'm going to have to go back and deal with here in a second. But I'm going to show you this technique first before I go back and do this, and then I'll show you my part of the technique. So you can see here, definitely uneven, not good. Now watch the paper, okay? Let's zoom out. Oh, I guess it ain't working like that, is it? We flip the chip over. And you see that? It's rubbing off. So if we flip it back over, You can start to see that the tops of the, you know, you might not be able to see. I'm looking at the video here and it's kind of hard to tell, but the very tops of these things are pretty flat now, okay? Now, I would say that the paper technique here is going to be amazing for small ICs, okay? They're going to have smaller balls on them. They're going to be they're going to be much more susceptible to losing that mass than some of these bigger balls here. And that's something that I thought about, you know, whenever I was you know, kind of experiment a little bit with his technique. I was like, you know, what if I needed to do a bigger chip with bigger solder balls on it? So I found a way. All right. Let's go ahead and add some more solder to some of these spots real quick, though. Let's see which ones need it. All right. This is going to be fun. I guess we'll put a little bit of flux in here. I just want to be able to see the side of this thing as I'm doing it, so just cover the ones that need it. No big deal. All right. Got ourselves a little solder there. All right, let's go ahead and get these areas good to go. It's kind of hard to tell the, the depth of it. That's why I only put the flux in those little spots, just because those are the ones that actually need it. Much easier than just guessing. I think that might be it. All right. So, 
Let's clean this up a little bit. We're going to check it one more time before we continue on with the second part. Just because we want to make sure that everything's there. Let's check it out. Oh, there's still one freaking... Yeah, it's like one. You're kidding me. A little piece of crud. Right there, huh? All right, I got you. I got you. I got you. Got your number. Dialing it in. I'm coming for you. I don't feel like you were little too. All right, I think we're good. Now. So like I said, with the small chips, you're probably best off using the paper because there's a smaller mass on the actual solder itself. Um, but when you're working with, and you know, I use the term larger solder balls, you know, loosely, very loosely, because in the grand scheme of things, these are actually very small still. But you'll see what I'm talking about here in a minute. You're gonna you're gonna understand as soon as I do this. All right, so we are all cleaned up. Let's wipe that off. And we're going to go ahead and grab our stencil because the whole point of this is one day you open the refrigerator and your solder paste isn't there, which, by the way, your solder paste needs to go in the refrigerator and so does your flux. Don't leave them out. They go bad. Um, but anyway, grab your stencil because you're going to use the stencil anyway. And we're going to put this bad boy right here. Of course. I'm still trying to learn how to do this YouTube. This is, you know, I'm going to go ahead and say something, man. I, I have a lot of respect for all of you other, you know, board level YouTubers because, you know, you can watch that stuff and you can, you know, you can be like, oh, you know, I could, I could do it better. I could do this. I could do that. But until you're actually sitting here talking, teaching, working, and doing everything at the same time, I mean, man, there's a lot going on sometimes. So, Mad respect for all you guys out there. You guys, you know, I hope you guys keep it up. You know, you guys keep me going. That's for sure. I love it. So anyway, let's go ahead and put our stencil over the balls. All right, we're going to line it up. Maybe if I knew what I was doing here. All right. So there we go. Take a look at the side here. Yeah, it looks like... Just about everyone is peeking over just a little bit. So I'm sure at this point you can guess what we're going to do here. If we take the stencil, which has a predetermined height, which is the exact height that you need to make your solder balls, and we take Zionese technique of flipping the chip over and running it along a piece of paper to uh, remove some of the mass, then what do you get? You get... A stencil with a chip on the other end with a perfect cutoff point so it's perfect like just sheer point okay so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take a small piece of sandpaper here I know this is the fun part this is gonna be awesome and we're just gonna sand over it okay now you definitely want to use something extra 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 as fine grit as possible because you don't want to you know grab these pads and pull them up or do anything I mean calm down before you get ahead of yourself here Super fine grit, nice and slow. Let's just get in there and get these things flat, okay? I would generally be very gentle starting out. And, and you might even want to get yourself a, uh, a secondary stencil just to do this with because you're definitely going to destroy the stencil a little bit sometimes. It's going to scratch it up. And as you get more into it, you can actually get a little rougher with it and you'll start seeing all the lead go everywhere and you'll start seeing the tops of the uh, the tops of the actual pads themselves you can see it right there I, I forgot you guys can see it um, there's a couple there they're a little low but you know you can see that they've got a little bit taken off the top and that's the key you know once we get this to the same level then you're gonna be all at the same level and all the 
the, the soccer balls are going to be perfect. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and take it out, and we're going to examine it once again. Man, super scratched up, but whatever, no worries. We're going to clean it off real quick, get some of that debris out the way. Now, I know what some of you guys are thinking. Why on earth would I do that and leave it like that? That's that looks terrible. You know, it's not gonna, it's not really gonna stick down that well. It's literally all the way to the edge of the pad. Okay, like at this point, all of these are pad-sized solder. Okay, um, whenever you're heating solder up, generally, you know, uh, you know, second law here, you, it's it's kind of going to the lowest energy state. So the lowest energy state would be the point. Okay, a point of the ball is definitely gonna wet faster than you know a big surface area like this. Okay, so we're gonna take this one step further. Okay. Now that we've got everything perfectly proportioned, and not so much perfectly proportioned, but we have it the right amounts, okay? We have the right amounts in there. What we're going to do is we're going to heat up the chip again, and we're going to let this stuff reflow into itself. And, you know, I almost want to fill in some of those small ones. I don't know. Yeah, no. What do you guys think? Should we just go ahead and do it again? I just want it to be perfect. I always want it to be perfect. Yeah, let's just go ahead and add a little bit there. I just, I mean, it, it, it's right, it's asking. It's it's just like, hey, you know, I didn't even get it. I didn't, you know, you didn't even do that part to me. I didn't, you know, I didn't get that part of the ride. No worries. We're just going to go ahead and fill them and do it again, just because I want it to be perfect. But isn't that the problem? I've always got to be perfect. Well, I guess I know which ones are too small now, right? Ooh, caught one. Oh, I knew it. This is what I'm talking about, guys. This is what I knew I shouldn't have. That was a freaking trap. Shouldn't even done it. No, I got this. Alright, 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 alright. I'm done. I'm done. I'm not playing anymore. Let's uh let's clean it off and grind it down a little bit again. You can see on the back here there's a lot of material that came off. I mean this works surprisingly well. I mean, seriously, props designing, man. That guy. And you guys don't even, man, he has got some tricks up his sleeve that y'all ain't never even seen before. I'm talking about things that just blew my mind. This guy's cool. All right, let's try this again. And, you know, really, truthfully, that's the best part about all this. You see, like, you know, I see that it's not perfect. Okay, go back out a little more. It's not that big a deal. You know, you can still do a perfect job, you know. A perfect job doesn't mean that, you know, you only did it one time and you were perfect, you know. It's the end result that matters. As long as the end result is good, then you will be good. All right. Oh man. See, this is just one of those perfection things that I got here. Yeah, we're calling it close enough. We're calling it close enough. Take that stuff off. You know, it's kind of cool the pattern of it when you look at it with the 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 cut the it's just like cut right off. I mean, you know, sometimes you'll pull up a chip and you'll be like, oh, I was super close to pulling up a pad because you'll see it right there and you're like, oh, it's flat. I'm like, but it's kind of cool looking at it on a whole chip like that, actually. All right. Now that we've done this, we're just going to go ahead and heat up the chip a little bit. Now, I'm not going to be baking this bad boy. I mean, we're literally just going to, you know, probably like, 220 something like that just enough to get them to wet and kind of ball back up a little bit so we're gonna have a little bit of flux to this bad boy why am i always goofing up here with this i never have the stuff i need out in front of me all right just kidding i gotta find something there we go maybe one day i'll properly prepare i try i really do I swear, like, 
Anytime you guys ever see me goof up, I see it later and I'm just like, man, I goofed up. Dang it. Right, we don't need a ton. Basically, the goal here is that once these things wet, you don't want them exposed to the air because they're going to oxidize immediately if they don't have some sort of flux barrier. Okay, and that's it's one of the main things about flux is it is definitely going to save your butt. If you're not soldering with flux, you ain't really soldering at all, are you? All right, so now we've got a flux on there. I had a change of heart and I went for 250. So, whatever. Here we go. This is actually going to be pretty cool to watch. Look at that. We got perfect solder balls. Oh, look at that. Woo! They are perfect. Man. Literally, this says perfect hand reball all over it. I'm loving it. Let's clean it up a little bit. And like I said, if you're using a smaller chip, this is much easier to deal with since you're just kind of rubbing it on a piece of paper. moment of truth all right we're gonna flip it to the side and I'm either gonna have a perfect hand reball or I'm gonna have egg on my face and I suck but anyway look at that damn near perfect every last one of them Look at that. So uniform. Now, obviously, you are never going to get machine perfect with something like this, but it's definitely close enough to work for sure, and they are all pretty much right on top of each other in terms of like height. Like, they are damn near perfect. I would not hesitate to throw this on a board. Look at that. They are literally all the same height. Look at that. Some of them are a little odd shaped, but they're all the same height, which is the key here. Let's flip it again. Just want to be sure here. Man. Tell you this. If I was in a pinch, I'd use it. I 
I just like looking at it. I'm not going to lie. Every time I do this, I just like looking at it because it's just, it's so cool because you don't have to use the solder paste and, you know, you're not caught. You know, if you don't, if you get, if you get put in a situation where you're, you're out of your stuff there and you need to make it work, you know, this definitely helps, you know. All right, so as you can tell, I realized that after I was done with the video that I noticed there was one that was messed up there. So, you know, I really want to go in there and fix that real quick. So let me do that. And then, then we'll officially for sure be done with this one. Perfect hand reballing forever. All right. So after I was done, I kind of put the stencil back over it. I, uh, like I said, I watched in the video as I was editing it and I was like, oh, that's definitely not perfect. So we can see it right there. So all we really need to do is add a little bit more to that one right there and try not to disturb all the, uh, the ones around it. Let's see. So this should only take a second and then we're done for realsies. Maybe. Did I get enough on there? No, not enough. Jeez, I suck at this one. Maybe let's not suck so much. There we go. That's the one I wanted. Yep, I think that's it. There we go. Let's crud off though. Woo. All right, now we're done for real. Anyway, I hope you learned something, and uh, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and I think you're supposed to turn notifications on now. I think I saw somebody else saying something about it. Make sure that if you subscribe, you turn on those notifications, because that's going to tell you every time I put something up, and, you know, might be kind of cool to watch. So, anyway, I'm Justin. This was The Art of Repair. I'll catch you next time.